Okay, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. So, today we continue with chapter 2, which is the plastic compounding uh, technology. So, uh, basically in this chapter, uh, you will, will learn about to define the basic concept of plastic compounding, to describe all type of compounding ingredient and their function of plastic manufacturing, to explain various processing equipment of plastic compounding. I think uh, uh, we will set, try to settle the first uh, learning outcome first and then the, the other uh, half of this lecture will cover on explain various processing equipment of plastic compounding and to suggest the remedial action for all compounding problems. So, some iterations of plastic compounding. A compounding consists of preparing plastic formation by mixing or and blending polymers and additive in molten state. Okay, there are different critical criteria to achieve a homogeneous blend of the different raw material. Okay, so basically, last semester you did learn about the rubber compounding. Okay, so similar to plastic uh, compounding technologies, which is plastic compounding also um, involves the uh, process of mixing of other additive towards that polymeric material. But uh, for plastic material, you need to be in a molten state to have a more homogeneous uh, blending. Okay. So uh, dispersive and distributive mixing as well as Heat are important factors. So basically, this is the three important uh, parts in achieving good homogeneous mixing. Dispersive, distributive, and it is uh, strongly related with heat. Okay. Conida and twin uh, screws. Okay. Later on, we will cover on this uh, type of equipment, but I, I just uh, explain first what's the um, Conida and twin screw. Twin screw can be either co and counter rotating as well as internal mixers are the most common used compounding in the plastic industry. So basically, it, to achieve a proper and homogeneous mixing, they use this type of uh, equipment. So most polymeric materials are not single polymer, but contain a chemical that modifies some physical or chemical behavior. This chemical called an additive. So basically, Polymeric material alone is not strong enough to fulfill a requirement of a final product in our daily life. But uh, in order to achieve uh, this uh, limitation, the additive uh, being added to that uh, polymeric material to enhance uh, either its performance, their aesthetical value, their properties, etc. Later on, we will go through what types of additive, what properties they provide. Okay. Okay, this additive generally modified properties, assist in processing and introduce new properties to a material outlet, uh, like I said earlier. So either in modifying properties, assisting in processing, and either uh, introducing new properties to a material. Okay, commonly there is a, a three uh, purpose that we add the additive. Okay? Coloring agent or colorants are added to giving a product component with a particular color often for identification and aesthetic pleasure okay for example if you go uh, you flashback during your high school you did learn about the um, uh, electrical devices okay uh, that wired uh, that um, if you uh, see the electrical devices commonly the switch the main switch consists of three wire okay there is a uh, live neutral and uh, what is, uh, earth okay so each of these wire have a different color this one we call the identi identification so different color identi uh, identify as a different purpose of these types of wire same goes here so that's Sometimes, uh, coloring is very important for identification. Other than that, it's more on aesthetical pleasure. It depends on a human preference. Some of us, uh, for example, uh, girls um, prefer a bright color, like pink color, yellow, red, and etc. While uh, guys prefer to blue, black, and something dull in color. But again, it is uh, depends on their uh, personal preference. 
in order to achieve a good market uh, demand. So aesthetical pleasure sometimes takes place a very uh, important criteria. Okay, so uh, other than that, okay, for example, antibacterial agent also aided to protect the material from certain mi microbial type food, uh, such as. Um, we have hand soaps, uh, currently we have hand sanitizers. As we know, the hand soap actually is polymeric material. Uh, uh, so it added other uh, an antibacterial agent to promote uh, and to protect uh, uh, our hands from the microbial attack. Other than that, we had used the composite material, composite content of fibers or uh, uh, particles uh, on a polymer phase resulting in material that has greater flexibility strength than either of the original component. Okay, polymeric uh, material alone, okay, the raw material itself is not strong enough uh, to withstand a certain certain pressure, uh, temperature, degradation, etc. With addition of fibers and matrix, it will, uh, sorry, addition to a fiber either in a fibrous particle etc will strengthen the uh, polymeric material and lengthen uh, the service life of the polymeric itself okay other than that uh, uh, for example this is a uh, example of the additive of fillers which is expensive usually the carbon fibers uh, any types of fi fibers uh, any type of carbon uh, fillers such as a uh, fiber, particle, pellet, etc. This type of uh, carbon fillers usually uh, promote in enhancing the mechanical properties. That's why it's very uh, expensive, okay? Uh, rather than the raw, mat uh, the raw matter, which is the polymer matrix. So, later on, we will go through what types of uh, uh, the purpose of this uh, carbon fillet, okay? Other than that, uh, additive that are added simply to give bulk are in, uh, bulk are inexpensive. So some of the natural fillers are added to that polymeric material to reduce the cost. Okay, whereas uh, in order to achieve these types of uh, filler technologies, uh, synthetic fibers or fibers are uh, result of extensive research by scientists to improve a naturally occurring animal and plant fiber. So, they manipulate uh, in manufacturing of synthetic fibers to replace a natural filler itself. Okay? Uh, the purpose is to um, reduce the cost of the final product. Okay, this is uh, some of the illustration of product that being used and additive to uh, to produce a final product for example uh, such as uh, uh, we have boot over here they put some fillers to strengthen the polymeric material itself plastic wrapper or plastic film usually they use some uh, plasticizer so that it can uh, more um, flexible and can be stretched to a thin slums and then we have a wood over here this is wood a wooden uh, uh, powders uh, they use for laminate they combined with the uh, polymeric material for lamination process and then we have some colorants for identification purposes and other products also used for engineering uh, uh, applications such as transportations okay uh, most of the transportation or most of the uh, automotive parts interior uh, automotive parts are being um, uh, being used uh, Polymeric material that strengthen uh, engineering uh, polymeric material because it is uh, light in weight, uh, cheaper as compared to metal, uh, easy to produce uh, and uh, easier to produce in uh, delicate details. Okay, this one are uh, usually uh, okay. This image here in bar uh, room actually uh, majority of the interior is made from the wood. As we know, the wood absorbs moisture. But in order to lengthen the uh, service life of this wood material in a um, high humidity area, we use some lamination to protect the wooden furniture or the interior uh, or in preventing it from uh, pick up any moisture. Okay, 
Component of plastic material, the main ingredient, of course, the polymeric material itself, okay, polymer matrix, the main ingredient are based on polymer such as PP, PE, or any commodity plastic itself. Later on, uh, I think last semester you did learn about the uh, uh, polymeric material, thermoplastic material, okay. This must be fed continuously and very accurately, okay. Each of the polymeric material have different properties. I think by this semester you already... Um, have uh, some uh, knowledge on the polymeric behavior of each of the material, uh, especially the commodity plastic itself. Okay, then uh, the compounding uh, of plastic. This is uh, the main importance of this chapter. Okay, the compounding of plastic. Typical, typical additive compounding ingredient additive can be in terms of powder, master batch, liquid, and other polymeric material itself. The first one is stabilizers, and then we have lubricants, plasticizers, color pigment, fillers, flame retardant, cross-linking agent, foam agent, um, and then we have a glass or carbon fiber for reinforcement. Okay, each of these types of additive, uh, we later on, I will uh, uh, explain uh, more detail the purpose and the function of each of these uh, typical additive. But bear in mind. This is not the, uh, the only additive that available in market or that being used in industry. There is vast types of additive okay, to comply the requirement or the demands of uh, the final product. But this is the most typical additive that being used. Okay? So later on, my probably I will give you some assignment to find out another types of additive that being used in industry that give a significant impact to the final product. Okay, the effective use of compounding has made it possible for plastic material to replace metal in high strength product. Okay, uh, for example, nylon plastic is commonly filled with 40% of glass fiber and used in the molding of large valve for sprinkler system. Okay, uh, why I use these types of uh, example? Okay, commonly, okay, previously uh, the sprinkler system uh, it's made from a uh, uh, strengthened uh, metallic material or metal, okay? So, this metal usually have a uh, uh, good strength, okay? Uh, because as we know, the sprinkler system use high pressure water. So, uh, most of the material cannot withstand the high pressure uh, of water. And if you use the commodity plastic without any uh, compounding ingredient that strengthen the material, it might probably blow during the operation. So, additions of 40% of glass fiber shows that the polymer material can withstand a high pressure from the water itself. So, in current industry, they producing a water sprinkler using a polymeric material to replace a, a conventional metal uh, water sprinkler. So, uh, the purpose here, uh, the first one is the polymeric matter is much more easier to handle, much more easier to uh, mold it, and it is, uh, it is much more cheaper as compared to the uh, metal, uh, metallic material. Okay, so that's why we are moving towards the uh, composite uh, material, polymeric, uh, composite, com composite polymer. Uh, to replace uh, engineering parts of the component. And then, filler uh, is a relatively inert material added to a plastic based on the following reason. The first one, to modify its strength, permanence, working properties, and other qualities. Or, to lower the cost while reinforced plastic in one with some strength properties greatly superior to those. The base reason resulting from the presence of high strength filler embedded in the composition. So basically, filler being used uh, for these two purposes. So please bear in mind the function of filler. There is two uh, functions of filler. The first one to modify the strength, permanent working property, etc. The second one to lower the cost. Okay. Some filler are more expensive than the polymer resin and contribute positively to overall properties. Previously, I didn't mention about the carbon black or carbon filler. Carbon filler is usually much more expensive than the polymer resin itself. But it contributes uh, significant improvement in overall properties of the final product. 
Okay, for example of filler, we have natural filler, occurring fillers are cellulosic such as wood flour, wood flour, shell flour, uh, protein, proteinous fillers such as soybean residue widely used in thermosetting material composite or we have inorganic fillers such as a calcium carbonate widely used in paint, plastic and elastomers. Fillers are relatively inert. Uh, while reinforcement improves the properties of a material to which they are added. Few types of filler used to do not improve properties, but reinforcing fibers produce dramatic improvement to a physical properties of the material to which they are added generally to form a composite. Uh, um, last a few slides I did mention about the composite, how they improve the physical properties, strengthen the polymeric material itself. So, some of the fiber just do improve their physical properties. Composites are material that contain strong fiber embedded in a continuous phase. The fibers are called the reinforcement and the continuous phase called the matrix, the polymer matrix. Okay? While the continuous phase can be metallic alloy or inorganic material, it is typical an organic polymer that is termed as a resin. Okay? Nothing much to worry about that. And then, uh, still in reinforcement, uh, the composite have high tensile strength, high Young modulus, and good resistance to weathering, exceeding to the bulk properties of the most metal. Okay, this, this is the reason why we are moving to the polymeric material with some reinforcement to replace most of the metal in our DD life. Okay, because we know the polymeric material material is much more easier to be molded as compared to the metal. The resin acts as a transfer agent, transferring and distributing applied stress to the fibers. For example, that uh, composite that being used is a glass fiber, carbon fiber, Kevlar fiber, uh, nylon fiber, etc. Uh, Kevlar is made from uh, uh, modified nylon and usually used in very uh, high protective device such as a bulletproof vest. Okay, later on you will go through uh, uh, with these types of uh, fibers. Okay. The second additive is the plasticizer. Plasticizer is a material incorporated into a plastic to increase its workability and flexibility or dispensability. It may lower the matte viscosity, elastic modulus and TG. An example of plasticizer is the OP, dioptal, phthalate. Okay, usually plasticizer uh, that commonly being used in uh, our industry is to soften the material. Okay, first to increase the workability and flexibilities of the polymeric material itself. The second one, okay, plasticizer being used okay, to modify the properties of the material. For example, if you see that PVC pipe is very, uh, what we call the stiff material, while the PVC uh, belt, belting, PVC plastic bag wrapper is very elastic material. This is the purpose of addition of plasticizer itself. Plasticizer modify the properties, okay? The flexibilities, the dispensabilities of other uh, uh, additive towards that, the polymeric material itself. But uh, it also uh, affecting the viscosity, the elastic modulus, and CG. So you need to have a precaution during conducting or additions of the plasticizer, uh, because uh, the excessive amounts of plasticizer might uh, resulting in unable to produce a final product with certain certain equipment. Okay. The flexibility of polymer can be achieved through internal and external plastication. Uh, like I did mention about the PVC just now. PVC pipes and PVC belting or PVC packaging. Okay? Internal plastication can be produced through a copolymerization, giving more, more flexible polymer backbone or by grafting another polymer onto a given polymer backbone. While the external plastication is achieved through the incorporation of plasticizing engine into a polymer through a mixing or compounding using a heat. Usually we use the uh, twin screw extruder, the internal mixing, etc. 
Then we have a compatibilizers. Compatibilizers are compound that provide a miscibility or compatibility to material that, that are otherwise immiscible or only partially miscible yielding a homogeneous product that does not separate into a component. Typically, compatibilizer acts to reduce the interfacial tension and are concentrated at face boundary. Okay. Compatibilizer usually uh, used uh, to mix two types of material to adhere or to interact more properly. For example, we have a filler. Some of the filler is a hydrophilic, while the polymeric material mostly hydrophobic. Okay, because of these two material, they tend to repel to each other. With this compatibilizer, they make these two material more compatible and they homogenize nicely. Okay. Then we have the impact modifier, improve the resistance of material to stress. Most impact modifiers are elastomers such as MES, acronyl butadiene styrene, butadiene styrene BS, the meta acrylate butadiene styrene, acrylic ethylene vinyl acetate, chlorinated polyethylene. Okay, the purpose of impact modifier to absorb the impact that uh, being forced toward the surface of the polymeric material. Usually, uh, this impact modifier being uh, implemented or uh, applied towards a material that have a motion uh, elements or application, uh, such as the interior parts of the automotive. Okay, so if you see the interior parts is moving uh, together and absorb the any um, vibration during the operation of the car itself. So uh, the impact modifier uh, will improve the resistance toward the stress. Okay. And then we have a lubricants. Lubricants are added to improve the flow of characteristic of material during its processing. They operate by reducing the melt viscosity by decreasing addition between the metallic surface of the processing equipment and the material being processed. Okay, lubricants um, might probably acting uh, a little bit similar with the plasticizer. However, it did not um, modify the TG and the uh, what we call the uh, the overall uh, flow properties of the material itself. So lubricant basically just improve the flow characteristic during processing. So if you you if, if you don't want to modify the properties of the material itself, you just want to. Uh, assist the processing, you might uh, consider using a lubricant during the processing. Lubricant reduces molecular friction, consequently decreasing the material mass viscosity, allowing it to flow easily. Okay, example of lubricant, we have wax, amide, ester, acids, and metallic steroids act as external and internal lubricant. And then we have a processing aids. Okay, what is processing aid? In order to improve the processing characteristic of the material, they may increase the rheological properties of the melted material. Okay, acrylic copolymers are often utilized the processing heats. Okay, and then we have a blowing agent. Chemical blowing agent are employed to create a lighter weight material through a formation of foam. Okay, the physical. Um, uh, chemical blowing agents are volatile liquid and gases that expand and volatilize, vo volatilize uh, during the processing through control of the pressure and temperature. So, blowing agent actually are promoting a porous area, expand the material, so the material become more lightweight, so it will produce such a sponge, okay, sponge or the uh, foam uh, material, okay. And then we have also the anti-static agent. This dissipate uh, static uh, electrical charges, insulating material, including most organic plastics, fiber, films, and elastomer can build up electrical charge. Okay, anti-static sums of the uh, material uh, that is uh, white in surface, usually um, uh, added with the additive of uh, anti-static agent to eliminate any build up of the static that will uh, cause an insulting material. And we have a flame retardant. 
since many polymer are used as shelter and clothing and in household furnishing it is essential that they have good flame resistance combustion is a chain reaction that may be initiated that have good flame resistance this may be introduced during polymerization process so they are parts of the polymer chain okay example is antimony oxide and organic bromide usually the flame retardant um, when uh, the, the the fire started on the polymeric material this material will release the oxygen uh, sorry to release the gases that squeeze any oxygen on the area and we stop the flames okay and then we have antioxidant antioxidant retard oxidative uh, degradation heat mechanical shear and uv degradation can be responsible for the formations of free radical which in turn can act to shorten the polymer change and increase the cross-linking both leading to a uh, deterioration and metal property usually antioxidant being used for polymeric material that um, operating at, or we use outdoor application so they uh, interact with heat any mechanical shearing effect or uv degradation they're promoting in a free radical jump from each other breaking the chain and deteriorate the polymeric material and then we have heat stabilizer added to the material to impart protection against the heat induced decomposition such stabilizers are needed to protect material when it is subjected to a thermal intense uh, process example the extrusion or when the material is employed under condition where the increased heat stability is needed example of heat stabilizers such as lead barium and cadmium salts okay some of the polymeric materials such as pvc polystyrene itself it is very uh, heat uh what we call the sensitive material so the the melting temperature and uh the curve melting curve is very narrow and the operating temperature is very uh small so that you need heat stabilizer to prevent any decomposition during the processing and then we have a colorant okay colorant is a subjective phenomenon whose aesthetic value has been recognized for centuries colorant that provide color in polymer may be dyes or pigment which are classified as organic or, in, or in, inorganic material so uh, basically uh, as i mentioned earlier okay colorants uh, can be used as um, identification in industry in daily life uh, application and also it is more on the aesthetical value okay so some of the product uh, require uh, a bright in colors to promote um, what you call that uh, buyers to buy the final product itself okay it can be either uh, coloring can be either from organic or inorganic material and then the compounding process okay basically the compounding process a continuous process the main step of compounding process are conveying plasticizing melting mixing homogenizing blending dispersing uh devolatilizing and granulating and palletizing okay i think that's all for this uh, chapter later on i will go on uh, missionary that involved in a compounding okay so I hope to see you uh, on next session. By then, uh, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Thank you.